Taino tradition includes an element that encompasses the veneration of those who have crossed over the sacred ancestors. These are those that no longer are here in the terrestrial plane, but now exist in the underworld plane of Kwai Bai. I am sending you this message sitting here in front of, of the pantheon of my ancestors. On that side, all of those who came before me in my family. My mother, who has already crossed over, her parents, the parents of my father, and going all the way back several generations. And to represent those of whom I don't have the details, I use this object in the middle. The question arises, how is it that the ancient Taino ancestors memorialized and invoked the presence of their dear departed. And this is the answer. First, they wrapped the body of the deceased in his or her own hammock. It was this familiar object which had served to support and cradle his body every night of his life that now served him as his burial shroud to envelop him in the night time of death. The body was buried, all wrapped up in the hammock in the soil of his birth. In this way, the dead body of the deceased rested within the maternal bosom of the earth while the physical elements that composed his body and life slowly returned to the earth and source from which it had risen, while the ethereal soul returned to the very womb of the earth, the cosmic matriarch of Abe. There it was destined to spend the eternity transmuting, shape-shifting, now a fish, now a bat, and at other times adopting an elegant, handsome spectral form, fitting of the otherworldly realm that is its home, and at times, especially during the night, returning to wander about in the physical plane. Once the body had decomposed, the ancients exhumed the bones and cleaned them reverently. Then they separated the skull from the rest of the skeleton. The long bones, such as the arm and leg bones, as well as the ribs, were sometimes cremated, and the charred remains were placed inside a large receptacle made from an iguera gourd. Igueras are gourd-like fruit of a tropical tree. These gourds are processed and dried. That iguera gourd represents the sacred womb of Atabe, the cosmic matriarch, the great Bibi Mother Earth, to whose bosom we all return. This portion of the remains contains the essence of one of the two components of the human soul, the Hu. The Hu is the animating element of a person's spirit. It is what allows the person to move, to walk, to jump, to breathe, to speak and to run. The other component of the human soul is the goes. The goes is a portion of the spirit that permits the person to experience sensory manifestations such as seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, as well as feelings and emotions. The seat of the goes is said to reside in the head, and thus the skull which contains the goes was carefully placed in a clay bowl and buried under the home. This form of veneration of the ancestors dates all the way back to the ancient ancestral dream time, the time of legends, the time of the myths. Our ancestors tell us that at that time there was the original couple, the original ancestral couple. Minan Karakarakol and Kagwa.
Wama. Turtle Woman. humanity had already emerged from the sacred cave, Kasiba Hagwa, the ancestral cave, and the human race, the human species, found itself living upon the surface of the earth. The ancestors share with us this story. From the time of legends, from the time that is called the dream time. At that time, after the people had emerged from the ancestral cave, there was a woman called Itiba Kaubab, who was the physical human manifestation of Akabe, the cosmic matriarch, here on earth. And she was here on the earth only for a short period of time, just long enough to give birth to the ancestors of the Taino. Itiba Kaubaba became pregnant, and from and from her womb, Emerged the Minan Karakarakol and his three brothers. These four, four youths were born of the same womb and so were quadruplets. Then, then Itiba Kaubaba died and her soul returned again to its place as the cosmic matriarch. The four youths grew, became mature, they matured, and they became four young men, but they lacked virtue. They were mischievous, badly behaved, and took advantage of the old people. And so, one day, they approached the Boio, the hut of the ancestral figure, Yaya. Yes, they even had the audacity to invade the personal space of the quintessential elder, Yaya Lokuo. This man had the same name as the Great Spirit. Because he had similar qualities as Yaya Guanture, the Great Spirit. So Yaya the man, Yaya the human, at that time was in the fields, cultivating his crops, farming, tending to the Konuko. And while he was absent from his mohio, these four young men came into the hut and began to look and look for food. They found it in the uh, burial, the funerary cord that was hanging from the ceiling of the home. It was hanging from cords. There was this large cord. That's where the bones of the son of Yaya were interred following the tradition of the ancestral Tainos his remains the remains of Yaya Yael, Yael, the son of Yaya were put into a gourd and were hung from the ceiling the brothers grabbed the gourd and they saw that the bones had turned into fish swimming around in the salty water inside the pool. And so they began to eat the fish. 
they consumed this forbidden food. Then they heard Jaja coming back. Jaja was returning. Frightened, they attempted to rehang the gourd from the ceiling and run away. But the cord slipped, the gourd fell and broke. And from inside it began to flow an unending amount of water. And the, wa the water filled up all the low places and became the Caribbean Sea. So the brothers, the brothers ran away from Yaya, the man. And they came into the hut of another old man, by Yamanaku, the Bihiki, the medicine man. Bayamanako at the time was doing a sacred ceremony of the Kohoba. He had inhaled powdered seeds, seeds that had been ground into a sacred powder. Kohoba is the hallucinogenic plant seed from a tropical tree. The ancient wisdom keepers and shamans invoked the assistance of this substance to help transport them to mystic zones of the spirit realm. And so, that is what Bayamanako was doing that day when Deminang and his brothers showed up at his bohío. And he was in a moment of trance. Now it is true that when large amounts of kohoba are inhaled, they make a lot of mucus flow from the nose. And so, Mayamanaku would wipe his nose from time to time as he did the ceremony. And then in came these, these disrespectful brothers into his hut saying, Hey, grandfather, give us something to eat. Come on, we'll take whatever we want. And they started snatching things from the shelves and from the hanging bags, the habas. Bayamanako sat quietly and watched as the disrespectful brothers ransacked his hut. And then, as he felt the accumulation of muc mucus in his nose, he put his finger up to one nostril and went, Foo! and blew a huge gob of mucus onto the back of Deminang. Deminang was, was indignant. Ugh, you nasty old man. Ugh, ugh, disgusting. Look what you've done to me. You blew that nasty stuff on my back. And just as he had said that, he began to feel pain on the spot where the mucus had fallen on his back. Oh, oh, it hurts, it hurts, oh, oh. His back was burning, there was pain. The other brothers just began to look at him. What's going on, brother? What is happening, Deminan? This old man has done some witchcraft on my back. It is hurting, hurting. So the brothers looked, sure enough, there was a swelling, a large hump was beginning to grow on Deminan's back. They did everything they could to alleviate it, but it just kept growing and it was hurting. The pain was unbearable. Deminan ran out of the hut and behind him is three brothers. He was rolling on the ground in pain, squirming, groaning and screaming. Finally, his brothers grabbed a knife and started hacking at the hump. She screamed, Aah! And from the cut, they saw mo some movement. They were amazed when the hump began to squirm and move. And from the cut began to emerge a huge turtle. Kawama. The 
the turtle, the female turtle, came out of the hole. Because you see, that turtle represented an element of human emotion that is called compassion. Yes, the four brothers had repressed this human emotion within themselves. They did not allow compassion to come out. They kept it trapped inside themselves. They had no compassion. Oh, they had it. But they didn't let it come out. They did not let it manifest itself. And without compassion, they weren't whole humans. Compassion is the female element that lives within all souls, within all hearts. They repressed it. And now, through the sacred magic of Bayamanaco, compassion had been liberated. It was growing out, it was birthing out of the back of Bebinan. The, the scattered personality of Deminan, these four brothers who essentially represented a, a split personality, did not know what this all meant. The turtle crawled out and turned into a beautiful woman. Kaguaba, the compassionate one. Then they knew what had been done. They understood. They saw. It is only through the balance of the male and female elements of humanity, the four four gifts that these four boys represented, open mind in the south, introspection in the west, wisdom and experience in the north, illumination in the east, Combined with the female element of compassion of Kaguama, the turtle woman, it is through the union, the marriage of these two, that a balanced humanity can exist. The split personality of the four boys became one was one man now united through the magic of Bayamanako one man one whole man, whole man married now to Kaguama the compassionate one the turtle woman and in unity they gave birth to a whole nation Taino the noble one This is the way that our ancestors commemorated the primordial origins of the Taino people, mythologically conceptualizing the beginnings of those human qualities, open mind, introspection, wisdom, and illumination embodied within the now fully integrated personality of the Milan, and the creative healing and nurturing compassion embodied by Kaguama, the turtle woman. If our ancestors could honor and venerate their dear departed elders in such a sacred manner, then therefore we, their descendants, also have the responsibility to honor and venerate those ancestors and all our loved departed ones in a similar manner. In this era in which we live currently, we dedicate ourselves now to honor the departed members of our families in a way that harmonizes with the traditions of our Taino ancestors, a way that maintains the integrity of that ancestral culture. The sacred ancestral departed ones, whom we identify with the term Hupia or Opia, have guided us to restore the ancient funerary traditions. We apply to this restored tradition the norms of the ancestral culture, and yet, at the same time, it is a viable current 
interpretation of the old ways, which fits into the contemporary lifestyle we live today. The Mejique, the spiritual guide of the Kanei Circle, is responsible for leading the celebration of the funerary ceremony, which has been restored to honor the revered departed ones of the community. The ritual process begins with the cremation of a symbolic container whose shape symbolizes Kwaibai, the place to which the soul of the deceased returns. This container can be created out of a simple strip of corn husk. This corn husk is shaped to resemble the form of an ancient Taino stone sculpture which is actually a cylinder with four projections arranged around its sides and facing the four directions north, south, east and west. This ancient sculpture also features a conical top pointing to the heavens and a flat base which appears designed to rest upon the surface of the earth. The corn husk strip is stretched out and four circles are drawn along its length, representing the four projections arranged around the ancient stone sculpture. When the corn husk strip is curled up into the form of a cylinder and its ends are pasted together, it roughly resembles the ancient stone cylinder. Having created this tiny corn husk container, the vehicle then fills it with a collection of items that represents the deceased. The contents can include a photocopy image of the deceased. It can also include a photocopy of his favorite pet or his favorite car, a small piece of paper bearing a loved verse, or the name of a place where wonderful memories were forged, a beloved flower, anything that was significant to the departed relative or friend is appropriate. Once the corn husk cylinder has been filled with significant objects, the Vejique prays over it and then places it on a wooden bowl or platform surrounded with dried flowers. This wooden object bearing the corn husk cylinder arrangement is then lowered into a large container full of salt water and it is allowed to float upon that water. The salt water represents the ancient primordial ocean of Taino legend and also it represents the amniotic fluid of the cosmic matriarch's womb. The Vejique then sets the floating arrangement on fire and ritually cremates it. The Vejique sings the funerary song while the arrangement is burning. Yo quiero que a mi me entierren como a mis antepasados Yo quiero que a mi me entierren como a mis antepasados en el vientre de oscuro y fresco de una vasija de barro en el vientre de oscuro y fresco de una vasija de barro Once the arrangement has been fully consumed the ashes are ground up into a fine powder and carefully divided into two small piles. One pile of ashes is placed inside a tiny iguera gourd. The other is placed inside a clay bowl. The gourd represents the large iguera gourds in which the ancient Tainos placed the long bones of their departed loved ones, which then were hung from the ceiling of the home suspended by cords. And the clay bowl represents the ceramic vessels that the ancient Tainos used to bury the skull of the loved one under the home. Ultimately, the small iguera gourd and the small clay bowl are destined to be placed upon a decorative wooden tablet. This wooden tablet is supplied by Vejique. Vejique himself or herself can create the tablet, or the Vejique can order one to be created by a craftsperson. This wooden tablet bears a small hook or peg upon the top portion of the structure and a small shelf at the bottom. The tiny iguera gourd that contains half of the ashes from the cremation ceremony is hung by cords from the hook or peg at the top of the tablet, representing the large iguera gourds containing the long bones of the deceased that were hung by cords in ancient times from the ceiling of the home. 
The little clay bowl is placed upon the shelf below to represent the ceramic containers that were used in ancient times to inter the skull of the deceased under the house. In conclusion, the ideal is to end up with an artistic creation that bears a photo of the deceased placed aesthetically between the hanging board above and the clay bowl below. This photo should be accompanied by a label bearing the deceased person's name. Part of the vehicle's responsibility is to finish this memory tablet and to give it to the relatives of the deceased so that they can hang it in an honored place on the wall of their home. After a certain time, the relative of the deceased may accumulate a collection of these tablets representing a number of his or her departed relatives. This family member might opt to place these tablets side by side upon a specially selected wall. The end result would be a wall of honor, a kind of family ancestral pantheon that includes all of the forebears that this family member has information about. So as not to exclude any of his or her ancestors, for which the family member has no information about, it is possible to celebrate a special ceremony dedicated to the unknown ancestors. The ashes from that ceremony can be placed in a larger gourd and clay bowl, and these two containers can be borne upon a large memory tablet which can take its place at the center of the honor board. In time, our ancient ancestors managed to create a surprising variety of receptacles into which they placed the remains of their dearly departed in the hopes of maintaining the essence of those deceased loved ones present in their lives. Those receptacles included wooden urns such as this one discovered in Cuba, and even one that is a cotton cloth effigy which actually contains the skull of a loved one. But we know that in spite of all these innovations, the most common tradition that remained in force was the use of a simple hanging gourd and a simple buried clay bowl. Of course, this was all done by our ancestors in an effort to maintain the presence in their lives of those who had once guided and protected their families, an effort to create the conditions within which those dear departed and continue to guide and protect the living even from beyond the grave. And this is what we also strive to accomplish even today. The presence of the ancestors is never too far away from us humans, us humans here on earth. It's around us. It's all it's all around. It exists in the beauty of a flowering plant, in the, in the delicate freshness of its blossoms, in the immense blueness of the sky, in the brightness of the sun, this of the sun. The presence of the ancestors is always, always there with the humans of today.